Hey guys, we're going to continue our discussion on rocks today, and uh, we're going to explore the third and final classification of rocks, what we call metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic uh, literally means to change form. Um, so we have rocks that have changed form. Uh, how do these rocks actually change form? Uh, the primary mechanism or process involved is both heat and pressure. And heat and pressure actually create new rocks. And they do this by recrystallizing the minerals. It's a recrystallization process, however, that does not include melting. So once it melts, well, then that becomes magma and or lava. And so it would no longer be considered a metamorphic rock. So this is a rock that has changed form from any other rock by heat and pressure. Every metamorphic rock has a parent rock, uh, just like we have parents. A rock is born from another rock. In other words, we could have a sandstone, which is sedimentary. And if heat and pressure is applied to sandstone, you would get quartzite. When heat is applied to limestone, a sedimentary rock, it becomes metamorphic marble. When shale, a sedimentary rock, is squeezed with heat and pressure, it becomes slate. So what do we look for? How do we know it's a metamorphic rock? Oftentimes, we'll see an increase in density. Because if you squeeze anything, if you add pressure to a rock, it reduces its volume, but it's still the same amount of mass. So the same amount of mass in a smaller area ultimately means that the rock will be more dense. Furthermore, as you heat it up and you squeeze it, the crystals tend to grow. A lot like those intrusive igneous rocks, the longer that takes, the larger the crystal grows. So where does this actually occur? Where do we get this intense heat and or pressure? Well, this heat and pressure occurs in Earth's crust, the outer shell of the Earth, what we call the lithosphere. And as you go deeper into the crust, there's gonna be greater pressure and greater heat. And those two processes reconstitute the minerals to form metamorphic rocks. Furthermore, oftentimes there's processes of plates, lithospheric plates that collide. Uh, this occurs, for example, at volcanic areas or it occurs where mountains are being formed. And when these plates collide, there's an enormous amount of heat and pressure that builds up between those plates and it deforms and changes the rock. Furthermore, we can also have an intrusive magma chamber. If there's magma within the crust, that magma can burn the surrounding rock. Now here's the burned area. We call it a contact zone. It's where the magma is burning the rock and changing the mineral construction and therefore changing the rock into a metamorphic rock without melting. Because again, the moment it melts it, it will then become igneous. There's actually a sequence of increasing metamorphism the deeper we go in the crust. If we start with sedimentary rock, for example, close to Earth's surface, we can see it has a relatively cool temperature and a low pressure. As that gets buried, temperature and pressure increase and shale, a sedimentary rock, will become slate. Adding more heat and pressure, slate will then be converted to schist. So the minerals are squeezed more, they're recrystallized. Schist then becomes gneiss, which is a really high grade form of a metamorphic rock that is intensely deformed under heat and pressure. So what else do we look for? Something we call foliated texture. It's a lot like having Play-Doh between your hands and then squeezing the Play-Doh between your hands. That Play-Doh would squeeze in between your fingers. The minerals in the rocks start to align themselves 
based on the compressional forces, the squeezing of the rock and the minerals start to become almost layered or aligned in appearance. This can create bands of minerals where we see streaks of light minerals like quartz alternating with dark minerals that are streaking through the rock like biotite mica. This gives the rock a distorted rock structure. Here is banding at its finest. This is the rock gneiss, G-N-E-I-S-S. And again, we can see the white quartz, which are highly deformed and aligned. And we can see the black mica streaking through the rock. This is foliation and banding of light and dark minerals. Here it is at its finest as well. More streaking in the most extreme version of it. We can see also streaks of mica and feldspars and quartz moving through this piece of gneiss. This is marble. This is the result of contact metamorphism or heat scorching limestone. Your next screencast, you're gonna be learning about the metamorphic rock chart. And so follow that carefully and then fill in the form questions when you're done. See you guys soon.